Welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you for tuning in. You know, one of the things that I thoroughly enjoy doing with this show is highlighting local churches. Periodically, we have the honor of having the senior lead pastors on our show, and I always, I, I really think that's a is something that I don't take for granted. They have very busy schedules, and when they come on our show, it's a real honor to have them. We have two two churches we are highlighting today. One is Radiant Church in Tampa. The other one is Countryside Christian Church in Clearwater. Both have some some incredible ministries that they do, and we have an announcement in just a, a few moments that there's going to be a, a new. Um, new thing happening at Radiant, and we're going to get filled in on that in just a moment. But then also stay tuned because a little bit later in the show, we're going to honor the founding pastor that passed away recently of Countryside Christian Church in Clearwater, Pastor John Lloyd. And we're going to take a look at his ministry and we're going to get the, the perspective of the current pastor, Pastor Glenn Davis, on his passing. So you want to stay tuned for that. But we're going to start with Radiant Church and their exciting news today. We have with us the founding pastor of Radiant Church, Aaron Burke, with us. Thank it you so much for coming back. It is great to be back with you. Yeah, Absolutely. we usually have about once a year. Yes. And But we, we also um, helped get the word out five years Absolutely. ago when you launched. Absolutely. So I, you have some exciting news and I'm going to let you share it, but tell our viewers what's going on with Radiant. Well, five years ago we moved here, didn't know anybody, and thanks to your help, we got the word out and launched our South Tampa location. We had heard that in our community, it was one of the most unreached areas of our community with 87% of the people not going to church anywhere. So we decided to launch um, our church there. Actually, it was called a graveyard for church plants. And we said, <laughs> okay, we're gonna take on that task and um, launch in that community. And God's blessed it. We have five services there now and on Sunday. And then we decided to move into downtown Tampa area. It's all being kind of renovated right now. So we just thought it was a prime spot for what God wants to do next and moved into that. And that has been a major outreach area of our community. We've been really been able to help the poor and the marginalized in that kind of that Tampa Heights area. And so we love what God's doing there. And then about six months ago, I was just got a dream put in my heart for Pinellas County and pulled some stats, found out that 75% of people are sitting at home on Sunday mornings, not going to church anywhere. And that's a large group of this peninsula that needs Jesus. So we decided to launch our third location into St. Petersburg and it's coming on September the 16th. Oh, yeah. We are ready. Our team is ready and we're excited about what God's going to do. Well, you know, the thing about St. Pete is there's just this booming area too. Yep. And you guys are a, a little bit on the, on the um, a good location in St. Pete to kind of hit everything, yeah. including other parts of Pinellas County. Tell, tell our viewers where it's going to be. Well, we will be at Canterbury School right mm -hmm. off of 62nd um, Avenue. And so it's a beautiful school. If, nobody's a, if you haven't been there, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful private at school right there. Yeah. We've really partnered with the school to be a blessing to them, but it's got a great auditorium. We have great spaces for kids and it's right in the middle of a bunch of communities and yeah. neighborhoods. So our yeah. whole goal is to hit really those young families. It's who Katie and I are. We have yeah. three kids, one on the way. So we've got four kids, which is people think we're crazy, but we, <laughs> we love it. And so we That's really want to minister. Yeah, yeah, hey, our fourth one. Yeah, it's exciting. So <laughs> Um, we're just really excited about reaching that community. And I think it'll actually be countywide of what the Lord will do mm -hmm. yeah. through that. Uh, we have a couple hundred people every Sunday that drive the bridge over to attend Radiant. Yeah. So for them, it's a breath of fresh air. Yes. We just think for the local church to be effective, it really needs to be local. So it needs to be in their community. So while these people drive over the bridge every week, I think for them, it'll better help them reach their friends and family that right. don't know Christ by having a local community for them to be part of. Yeah, and you already have, you know, give them a shout out you know, to, to you have a pastor in place. Yeah, yeah, we have an amazing location pastor there and his name is Kenton, him and Alyssa yeah. um, have actually moved from Pensacola to help us start Radiant five years ago. It's a crazy story, they get married, they go on their honeymoon and then the next week they move to Tampa. So it was like, <laughs> it was a major faith step yeah. and then they've just been part of our team for the last five years and God brought St. Pete into their hearts. They moved in the community, been small group leaders in the community for years. Yeah. 
So they're really excited. They'll be pastoring this area. Well, you know, the, the one thing, and, and you mentioned it too, and, and just give it, give our um, viewers, and I want to point out too that all these campuses, you are preaching at them. This yeah, is all done yeah, through satellite, you know, the, uh, yeah. streaming and everything that you're using technology, technology for God's glory. Yeah, yeah, you show up life size. At yeah, each, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. At each campus, um, but uh, and then, but you also have pastors in place for yeah. those for those churches. Um, but you you mentioned it briefly. You have a you, you're targeting. Who are you? targeting with your ministry? Everybody has a vision yeah. for their ministry. What's your vision? Well, our target is really simple. Our target is people who don't know Christ. Yeah. So, I mean, we're the we're a Luke 15 model where Jesus was interested in the lost coin, the lost sheep, the lost boy, and that's kind of our focus, the lost son. So, we just go after people who have kind of given up on church or um, maybe have bad church experiences. We had um, uh, yesterday <laughs> right at a, a hundred people going through our new attenders class. We do it once a month and polling those people, most of them come from an experience of, they just hadn't been to church in decades or years. And for me, we just provide kind of a breath of fresh air, non-threatening environments for people who don't know Christ. We're reaching a lot of millennials, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I um, want to think I'm a cool young guy, but I'm really not. I'm in my mid thirties. Got about five years left. I know exactly, <laughs> but I think it's a joy to see so many people um, of multiple generations. Actually, yeah. the more mature generation, as we call them, not the older, the more mature generation that attends our church, which is actually a large demographic. Them, they yeah. love seeing yeah. the yeah. young life. It's true. Because there's something about the hope of the fact that out of those hundred or so people that are joining the church from this month, probably 60, 70 percent of them are under 30. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a breath of fresh air thinking, man, this next generation yeah. is being raised up. They're going to get married within the church. They're going to raise their kids in the church. Their kids are going to come know the Lord. Uh, this is this is the hope The local church is the hope of the world today. And when yeah. we do it right, we're going to reach this next generation and carry on and really pass that baton to what God has next. Well, you know what, it's, it's, that's huge because that is also, if you read any, any of the st statistics that you look at church growth or lack of church growth or demographics of various groups, that's the group that opts out of church a lot. Absolutely. And to have a church that, they're, that you're growing in yep. that group. And I, I want to give a, a little um, um, plug for this because um, we visited, a, we have visited a couple times and it, it you guys are just nailing it in terms of, of the, the, all the different types of people that walk through the doors, yeah. young people. Um, I, you know, our, I did see our, our age there, um, but, but you're right. The older people that like ourselves, that my husband and I, we went, we really, it was so encouraging to see all these young people yeah. um, and that were coming. And we have a young adult daughter, so it's like you, you, you want that, you know, yes. to see that happening. Yeah. Okay, so um, tell us about recently, Recently, you did a launch for the St. Pete Night. Yeah, yeah, And absolutely. you had a particular worship night. Tell us about that. So we decided to do a different model with launching this location, and we wanted to really come in and let the community experience what uh, they're going to experience every single Sunday. So we did our very first worship night a couple weeks ago and uh, maxed out the facility and had, had to bring in chairs everywhere. It was a crazy, crazy experience. Yeah. Lines of cars went all the way down wow. the street of just wow. people excited. It showed me there's a huge hunger in that community. Yes. And what Radiant offers is two things. We offer community where people can connect. They need that. You can watch church online, you can worship in your car, but you gotta have community. It's important for life. And we provide an opportunity for people to experience God's presence. I'm still a firm believer that's His presence that changes everything. So we did a worship night. We'll do another one in August the 22nd. So just in the next few weeks, yeah. we're really excited about that. And it'll be open to the public. And then we launch in September. So. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up on that. This is a good, a good stopping point. And I, I just want to um, commend you on, on following God's call. These are big steps. Thank you. This is, this is a commitment of volunteers, yes. of people coming, of music teams, of tech teams, all these kinds of things that need to be in place. And they have the heart and the vision for it as well. So keep us posted here at Bay Focus on how things we're go. So and give excited. us the start date again. September the 16th, we'll launch with two services there okay. at Canterbury, and then get all of the information at Radiant Tampa or RadiantStPete.org. Okay, websites. sounds good. And we're going to, to let you take a look at that worship night uh, before we continue on with Bay Focus. So let's take a look at what happened in that, that first worship night, what's going on with Radiant St. Pete.
his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want us all to say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, Hello, I'm Darlene Greenlee, and I want you to make room in your schedule each week to tune into Bay Focus. We are going to highlight local events, ministries, concerts. Reporter Brooke Larson goes behind the scenes at some of those concerts and talks to music artists, local pastors, ministry leaders. Tune in each week. I'll see you on the next Bay Focus. Well, I hope you'll go out and support Radiant Church, and, and there are three locations now, but coming up St. Pete in September, what an exciting thing for them as well. well we're going to change directions a little bit, but another phenomenal, great church uh, here in Pinellas County, long time here, Pinellas County in the Clearwater area, it has been Countryside Christian Church, and we are honored today to have their lead senior pastor with us, Pastor Glenn Davis. Thank you so much for coming back on. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been it's a little while since we've had you, but we have had you a number of times over the years because yes. you've been involved in ministry for many years. And uh, as I mentioned early in the, the program today, we are going to take some time and the remainder of this program to honor the founding pastor of Countryside that passed away, that was well known in this area. Uh, he passed away a few months ago. I also had the honor of interviewing him uh, a few times here on Bay Focus over the years. But we wanted, it, it is such an impact in this community. We're going to talk to him but bef about him. But before we do that, I want you to update our viewers for that maybe you may be brand new to some of our viewers uh, tuning in. Tell them, start with, where Countryside Christian Church is, a little bit about the ministry. Well, Countryside Christian Center was founded in 1981. It's mm -hmm. at 1850 McMullen Booth Road in Clearwater. And God's doing amazing things. We have a school there from newborns up through eighth grade. Um, we're a very multicultural, multi-generational church, yeah. very intentionally. And our heart is to reach the community and to touch people's lives with, with the message of Christ, to see them become fully devoted followers. Yeah, of and you do this, and, and I, you did it um, for many, many years, known as Countryside Christian Center. You've recently done a change to Countryside Christian Church. So that's what people driving by, that's what they, they will see now, correct? That's right. So, so it's the same church, been started in, in uh, 1980, I right. believe. Um, and I, I want to specifically say, because I, I think when I, you know, I always try to do my homework. I'm very familiar with this church as well. I visited every one of your locations since, except the house church. It's the only one I wasn't at, but every one I have visited and been in service is at. I had two brothers that have been involved there over the years, including my oldest brother who passed away, who used to be even on one of the elders years right. ago. Yep. And um, so we visited all the locations, always ministered to when, when we did. But you guys do do, I mean, between that, you, you kind of flew by the Christian education. You do the cr Christian preschool, the Christian academy. You do before and after school care adventure club. The Christian life school of theology. You're heavy into Christian education and outreach providing food, clothing, um, food trucks, all these things for your, the community. So you guys have a huge imprint on, on the community and I want to commend you for that. And then Pastor Glenn, um, just give us the, just before we head into talking about Pastor Lloyd, uh, you've been there for a long time. Tell, tell our viewers your, the impact this ministry has had on you. Well, I started going here in 1981 when I was 15 years old and just served. Um, fell in love with Jesus. Um, 
was the youth pastor for 20 years, yeah. uh, was the executive pastor for 10 years, and uh, became the senior pastor in 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you have literally walked through it all and came up within. So it, it's, it's a good example of when you, um, you know, you're in a ministry and that you are promoted from within and you, you bring, come up through the ministry. And the, one of the big reasons is that is you worked under, side by side, with the founding pastor, John Lloyd. Um, first of all, um, um, I, think he, I think it was just a couple of months ago, if, my, if I have my, my facts correct, it was June 16th. Correct. He passed away. Um, he had had a battle with cancer. Correct. Correct. Um, but tell us, uh, we're going to, I want our viewers to stay tuned because just a moment, we're going to do, have a video that kind of chronicles his ministry at Countryside over the years. But tell us a little bit about him. Uh, he came, what they're not going to see in the video, he came from uh, a product of the 60s. Correct. Tell us a little bit of his story and then how you encountered him. Yeah, he got saved in the Jesus movement and he ran a coffee house in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Petra was his house man. Honey Tree wow. was his secretary. Wow. Bill Kagey came through that ministry, all kinds of Christian music. He was really one of the founders of contemporary <clears throat> Christian music. When he came here, he came here for a year. He served at Christian Retreat and then he began countryside in a living room with seven yeah. people. My family started the second week. Wow. And there was something special about that man. The zeal that he had for God, the zeal that he yeah. had for the lost, the zeal he had for prayer was uncommon. And the church immediately grew to almost a thousand people within five years and the rest is history. But yeah. he was a zealot like I've never seen in my life. Yeah, and you, and you know, when I'm um, thinking of him, one of the things that I remembered was so clearly when we would visit, um, different times we would visit, because we, at, at a lot of those years, we were not living in this area at that time and we would come back and visit family and we would go to church there. You also had big productions. Music was huge. Music was huge. Yeah. Has always been and continues to be at Countryside. You've always been on cutting edge of contemporary music. And, um, but he, he had an ability to teach. Yes. There, you, know, you, have, you have different things when you say pastors, but he, he, I guess would be um, pastor teacher could be a Absolutely. And evangelists. He yes. had so many gifts, um, yeah. but he really looked at the music as being a tool to draw people in. Yeah. And then he was so mm -hmm. discipling of people and raising up leadership. Almost everyone through the years, we probably had 60, 70 pastors come through, mm -hmm. associates. They were all raised up within our church and yeah. through Pastor Lloyd's ministry. It was uh, a dynamic heart of discipleship that he had in teaching. So if you were to say, if, if you were to say for your own um, your own ministry and everything that you, what, have, what has been some of the takeaway for you and I, because obviously he's, he was the founding and there was some time he did, he did retire from, um, from countryside, went on to ministry elsewhere. Um, and I think he retired, I don't find real correctly. I'm not, may not be correct on that, but I know, but you, then you were given the reins. It was a logical passing. Like, like you had been actually trained under him for this, for this, um, passing the baton, but you've also made it your own and really had your own vision for ministry, your own, but the takeaway for you having worked under him, what have you learned and what have you applied in your own ministry from it? The importance of prayer. Uh, oh, prayer is the foundation thing. of it all. Uh, it kind of yeah. rises and falls on the prayer of the church. Um, the importance of evangelizing and reaching the lost, always having the heart for the one. Um, yeah. We have an altar call every service that came from Pastor Lloyd, yeah. because if there's yeah. one person that comes in that doesn't know Christ, that could be the opportunity that they have to hear it. That's right. And so that's very important that we do that. Right. Um, and also just to be on the cutting edge of reaching today's culture. We want our church to be a footprint of what our community looks like. So yeah. we want to reach people from birth to death. So we have all generations and all races yeah. in our church is very yeah. important. I love that. I've always, I've always felt, you know, that churches to strive for that, for the, for the multi-generational, well, along with the understanding that some churches have a niche with a certain, you know, certain group. But I have, I want to, I want to jump on, I, I want to jump on the prayer thing because he, I, I have memories of that. That was a huge thing on Saturday night. That's right for many, many years. And then it transferred, I think, into Sundays before services. Yes, and worship nights and where worship, we have prayers yeah, as well. Yeah, as I say, mm -hmm. with the prayer. Um, and I, I, you know, if there, and I, I might be getting um, 
a little bit. I don't want to be soapbox here. But if there, there I know, there's anything that I lament greater in, in the church, is, is have, and, and some of that's because of the advent of the multiple services. You have to keep things moving. You have to, the next group is coming in the parking right. lot with the, you know, all that. But to create avenues for prayer. Right. To create uh, for that. And that's something he did. Absolutely. People would come. For from years, we'd have that. three to 500 people on Saturday night just It was praying. unbelievable. Just praying. Yep. It, w it was all along that line. Okay, uh, we have just a couple of minutes left is, and, uh, before we transition to this video. Tell me a little bit on, with, and you know, obviously with, well, we're gonna close out with Pastor Lloyd, but where are you, the vision ahead here for Countryside? Where are you, what do you see ahead here? What, what, what are some things you're doing and working on for your vision ahead? Well, we're working on a dream center right now. We have a ministry called Helping Hands where last year we gave out close to 800,000 pounds of food to the local community. Wow. Wow. So we feed 50 to 60 families every day, Monday through Saturday. And so we want to continue to be an outreach church. We just rebuilt our old sanctuary into a youth center. So we are always going to be focused on the next generation. That was my heart for many, many oh, yeah. years. It'll never go away. And so it's very, very important to reach that next generation who is so desperately needing a savior. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, one of the things that, um, um, Pastor Aaron Burke, who you know, said with Radiant Church before, how important it is for the, the, the older generations to come alongside the younger and, and try to help them and, and really try to, try to bring them into the kingdom. Are you seeing that at your church as well too? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm not as cool as Aaron, but um, <laughs> we're, we're reaching um, some millennials. I'm a Gen X guy, we're reaching the Gen X, but we're really leaning on the older generation to yeah. mentor the next generation. So we yeah. include them to be a huge part of, of yeah. leadership in our yeah, church. Yeah, I think, I think Pastor Glenn, you're, you guys are about equal on the cool level. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just give you that, I'll give you guys that today. But I went to, I visited your church a few, few weeks ago and you had a very relevant message that a lot of uh, young people would have enjoyed too. All right, we're going to, we're going to, um, lead into this this uh, video I think of Pastor Lloyd um, I just I I just want to say from my perspective uh, a little bit too uh, is what a tremendous impact he had in this area to in to Pinellas County to build the work that he did and when he started it to reach that Jesus people generation um, just lasting fruit like you said ministers that have gone out, gone out from the church. Um, what, if you could, and I'm throwing this at you, if you could say uh, of his legacy um, that to you stands out, really just stands out the most. You knew him as a man, you knew him as, as a family, you, knew the, you, you saw him, trials and tribulations, everything, you know, you guys working side by side, you saw the different things. What, what is his legacy? His legacy, he was real. What you saw in the pulpit was what yeah. he was outside of the pulpit. He was my spiritual father. So my heart aches right now, um, yeah. but he was a soul winner. Yeah. He was true blue. He stayed faithful to God. There wasn't scandal in his ministry. Yeah. He stayed faithful to God from the beginning to the end. Um, just a pioneer. He was a pioneer. You can't ask for more than that yeah. for any of us. That's Thank right. you, Pastor Glenn, for your thoughts on this. And we're going to close out the program today with a look at the ministry we had to take. There literally was a 15 minute video shown at his memorial service that we cut down to about four and a half minutes because we didn't have the time for the whole thing, but we think we got the really good parts out. So you want to look at this on his history of Pastor John Lloyd's ministry here in Clearwater at Countryside Christian Church. Blessings, see you next week. In 1980, Pastor John Lloyd responded to God's sovereign call to leave his ministry in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Stepping out in faith to move to Clearwater, Florida, Pastor John founded a church in the living room of Paul and Ellen Eckley in 1981, calling it Countryside Christian Center. I thought, well, you know, we've got to start somewhere. And we started with about five people, and we grew to about 50 people in their living room. Caused a little problem with the cul-de-sac. The cars parked everywhere on Sundays. In 1982, Countryside found a new home at the Kapok Tree on McMullen Booth Road. With more room here for expansion, the church grew to 200. Then, the Lord led Countryside to the 12th floor of the 1100 building in downtown Clearwater. I didn't know, you know, how many kids were going to come when there was no signage out front and there were three elevators, and I just didn't know how that was gonna work. And then, 
surely as can be, the Lord spoke to me and said, what happened when I was in the wilderness? And I said, well, multitudes came. He said, wherever I am, people will come. The church remained here for the next four years, where it grew to 800 people. In 1986, it was time to move again. The congregation purchased 12 acres of farmland and began construction on the very first building. And so I looked at it, and we ended up uh, purchasing half of it. We couldn't afford all of it. And we built a church there and seated 1,300 people. And that's amazing because it was a two-lane road that was just on the edge of town. And it became like a six-lane highway. And we were right on the main road. Only three years after this, the church would purchase an additional 12 acres for a much-needed education building. This would be used for classes, student and kids' ministries, a fellowship hall, and a Christian training center. Over the next 14 years, Countryside would double in size and see thousands of lives changed with the gospel of Jesus Christ, both locally and internationally. In 2004, God called Countryside to expand once again. A new worship center was built to accommodate the growing church, and the original building would be transformed into a student center. Pastor John remained at Countryside after 29 years of ministry. He has left a kingdom legacy which will live on through the ages and the thousands of those he won to Christ here at Countryside Christian Church and around the world. He has blessed and mentored so many in his ministry here on this earth. If God said he'd do it, he'll do it. Hello? If God's promise says that he'll supply all our need according to Christ Jesus, he'll do it. Put your trust in him. It's faith. Is God a liar or do you believe him? Are you putting his trust in him? Or are we worrying, grieving, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I prayed it just didn't do any good. Oh, pray for me, pastor. Pray for me, pastor. It's not going to do any good. I can pray for you, but if you don't let the word get into your heart and believe it, I can pray all you want until you believe God, nothing's going to happen. It's when you believe him, then God will cause things to happen in your life. I'm just an old hippie, man. God saved and God happy, you know. I, I think I might have a little bit left in there still. I don't know, but I've, I've matured a lot and mellowed out, you know. But I still like to play my guitar and make a little noise. And, No more LSD for me. I met the man from Galilee. Eddie saved my soul and made me whole. And heaven is my home. 